Hello, buddy, and welcome to Where Are They Now in Sports? Live from the shave in Beverly Hills. Today's <laughs> guest is a former UFC fighter. I'll tell you one thing. I don't want to mess with him, man, because he might do this to me like, ah, you know. <laughs> anyway, please welcome Kenny Florian in the house. What's up? What's going on? How you on, doing, man? <laughs> Long time no see. I know, I know. How's the back going? Uh, back is okay, thankfully. Right. Yeah, it's all right now. <laughs> when you were a little kid, you said, Mom and Dad, when I grow up, I want to do what? Oh, man. Uh, let's see. It, it definitely wasn't an MMA fighter. Uh <laughs> Hmm, what did I want to do? I, I think just so I was really into soccer, believe it or not, uh, which is maybe the opposite of, of fighting. But You actually had um, six siblings, right? Yeah, I'm Four one of child. six, so yeah. And were they all lefties like you? Uh, no, no. I actually, I'm a converted southpaw, believe it or not. So I, I fight lefty, but I'm right-handed, so I'm all messed up. <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yeah. You got a scholarship. Uh for soccer to mm -hmm. Houston College yeah. to play on their team. Yeah. Tell, me about, tell me about that experience. So, yeah, you know, I played at BC and, uh, you know, I had a lot of uh, a lot of family members who went to Boston College and, and uh, that was kind of the, the Division One program I wanted to be a part of uh, for soccer and uh, knew the coach and, and knew a lot of the players uh, who were on the team and stuff like that. And uh, it was pretty close to home and that's kind of where my focus was. And and uh, ended up playing there, and um, yeah, it was actually in college where I also discovered Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and and uh, got in got into to the martial arts once again. I started did martial arts as a kid as well, but again, it was in college where I, I saw the first UFC and kind of fell in love with uh, what Hoist Gracie was doing. I was like, man, he's a skinny guy like me. Maybe I can learn that. And I had no intention of fighting, but I, that's when I started learning, and I really started. You know, from the first moment uh, I learned Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I really fell in love with it. And I had a little bit of problems with the coach, kind of going back and forth. And senior year, uh, kind of got in a little fight with the coach. Not a physical fight, but just a kind of argument. And that was when I kind of made up my mind. I said, you know what? I got Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu here as, as an option. I'm going to start practicing. I kind of started dedicating my time more and more to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu after soccer. Uh, was over. So when you graduate from college, mm -hmm. you got a communication degree. Mm -hmm. After that, what happened? I mean, you know, when you graduate from college, it's called right. welcome to the, welcome yeah the real to the world. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to the unemployment. <laughs> you gotta search for a job, yeah, right? yeah. So when you graduate, and I know your parents, well educated, yeah. two back surgeons, yeah. right? Uh, I mean, what field did they tell you? Because I'm sure parents were there all educated. Yeah. They're like. Hey Kenny, you better be doing this, right? <laughs> sure. No, exactly. Yeah, no. My my uh, my dad was a chest surgeon actually, and he was, uh, you know, all about me trying to go to law school, and and I was like a part of the pre law program, and was already kind of looking at some law schools and things like that, but uh, knew kind of wanted to work for a year or two, and I worked it at a. Uh, translation agency basically we went and translated different documents boring stuff uh, I was on the financial side of things but we did medical and financial translations I was on the financial side and managed different projects in all different languages and, um, you know I grew up speaking Spanish and uh, could also speak Portuguese fluently so that's kind of what I what I did and and, um, and it, obviously it didn't move me you know I, I wasn't really moved by by the job it wasn't that exciting to me um, but I worked hard and, and did what I had to do to, to make some money. And But when you told your yeah. parents, mom and dad, I found my passion. Yeah, they thought it was crazy. They're like, well, how are you going to make any money doing that? You can't make money doing that. I said, well, if I open up a school or if I do this or do that, you, maybe I can make some money. And um, I had this like near-death experience in Brazil. I fell off a cliff. And I remember I was like falling. And you see your whole life flash before your eyes. And as I landed, I was like, man, that would have been crazy. If I died, if I landed on my head or something – um, it would have been really bad and I would have had a lot of regrets that I didn't follow this thing that I wanted to do and uh, I went home. I was in Brazil. I went home a few days later and I quit my job. I said, you know, I'm going to work part time for you guys. I want to teach and I want to compete. That's that's what I want to do. Um, and my parents thought I was crazy. They're like, you know, immediately, immediately they're thinking financially and they don't want me to struggle and they're like, how are you going to how are you going to make that happen? And um, I, it didn't matter to me. To, for me, if I was able to train in jiu-jitsu or do the martial arts every day, I was going to be a happy man. And that was the most important thing. And uh, that eventually led to led to fighting. And, and again, my parents weren't fans of that either. They didn't want to see, um, you know, their son 
fight yeah, and get beat fun. up and yeah. get bruised up and get cut up and look as ugly as I do now. So that was. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. You get a bad so that, <laughs> That's I know, I know. <laughs> so that was, uh, you know, that they were definitely a little concerned, and, and I think it took them a, a few years to, you know, kind of get used to the idea that I was going to be a, a fighter. You know. Oh, absolutely. So. <laughs> Your first MMA fight. Yeah. Where was it? How was it done? Talk to me. Who was the guy? It was at Club Lido in Revere, Massachusetts. Oh, <laughs> and so it was, you said it, it's like a little like so it was uh it was this nightclub and there was maybe enough room for maybe four hundred people. Were girls dancing too? Yeah, I I don't know if girls were dancing, maybe okay. in the ring as they were holding oh, the okay. ring cards, but um uh yeah, it was it was a unique venue and um I was there and fought. I think I was one of the, you know, featured fights of the night. Um, and uh, yeah, I remember I I, I I had a pretty easy fight. Thankfully, um, I ended up taking the guy down and and, and won with with strikes from from the mount position. And uh, they stopped the fight. It was a first round TKO. And for whatever reason, man, I was really relaxed before my first fight. I, I was nervous leading up to it, but that night I just felt good. I was like, man, this is what I've trained for. I just wanted to know what it was like to get in there against another trained martial artist. I had no intention of I didn't say at that point, I want to be a fighter. That was kind of, I just wanted to try it. So yeah. throughout your MMA fights, you actually, uh, the story, Dana White was, uh, found out there was a match. Yeah. Was it in uh, Massachusetts? It was. It was. He, was ha he happened to be in, uh, in Boston, mm -hmm. and um, he was actually scouting out my opponent. For this new reality show he was doing, The right, Ultimate his name Fighter. Is Drew, Drew Fickett, exactly, Drew Fickett, right? exactly. Yeah, you did your homework. I my yeah, homework. yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Like, Eddie, Eddie right. knows his stuff. Uh, yeah, so he, um, yeah, he was scouting on my opponent. He had like 30 fights. He was like on a crazy win streak. He was beating everybody left and right. And I was like, you know, this small kid who was fighting up a weight class and you know, Dana said, he's like, I thought you were going to get your ass kicked. He's like, I said, he's like, I thought you were going to get your ass kicked. He goes, and then I thought you won the fight. And Drew ended up winning the decision. It was a split decision. Okay. Uh, two judges went with him. One judge went with me. I thought I won. I was all upset. And Dana came back to my dressing room. He goes, hey, we're doing this ultimate fight. because I was really impressed. We're doing this reality show. Send us in a video or interview. Have your brother interview you and send us in, send it in uh, for the producers, you know, and I didn't do that. I ended up sending some seminar DVD of me teaching jujitsu. I was like, screw it. I don't want to do that. And, um, they ended up calling me and invited me out to Vegas and did the whole interview process. And then I ended up on, on the first season of the ultimate fighter. So that's how the first that happened. Season, ultimate fighter. Yeah. You know, us men, we have egos when it comes to competitiveness, yeah, right? Yeah. You go in there. Are you guys all living together too? It was 16 guys in a house, and um, I was fighting up two weight classes from where I should have been fighting. It was 185 pounds, so I was going in there against guys who were walking around at like 205 pounds, 200 well, pounds up, plus. Man. Yeah, big dudes who cut down to 185, and I was like a chubby 178 pounds or something <laughs> at the time. And um, yeah, it was so two weight classes. There was a 205 pound competition, eight fighters, and then eight fighters competing for the to be the champ at 185. And we all fought each other, and uh, until there was no one left, and, and that was pretty much it. So now you know it was in Vegas, right? It was in Vegas. So we lived in a house. Yeah. Well, you guys, oh man, let's go to Vegas. Let's go party. I mean, <laughs> See, here's the thing. That? I mean, here's the thing. We couldn't. So we had. To, we were basically imprisoned in this house. Okay. So no TV, no radio, no books, no nothing. But it, the the house was filled with alcohol, so you couldn't leave the house. You couldn't. So they basically wanted you to kind of go crazy in the house, so they can get so they all the drama, drama that happened. Exactly. But you were so. calm. You never had drama, right? Eh, for me, no. I was good. I was good. I didn't really. You just saved it for the. For I, the I cage, just right? I just hung out. Exactly. I, I just try to stay focused the best that I could, and uh, but it was it was entertaining being you in know, that house, man. It was how crazy. Many seasons did they have? I think right now they're on maybe their twentieth something season because maybe because season one you had yeah. some studs coming yeah, out of yeah there were a season, lot of guys yeah right? yeah and um you it was the final two between you and it was me and diego sanchez, sanchez. so diego was kind of one of the favorites i had beaten one of the favorites chris lieben uh in the semifinals, and then i went against diego who a lot of people thought were going to win it all and this kid was a, a killer man he had a ton of experience he was from a great camp and uh he beat me up in the final man he oh, got he got man. me in the final. He got me in the final, I man. Want you yeah. To say that. That's I know, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he did. It didn't go well for me in the final, but that what that's really what motivated me to say, all right, 
I don't want to go out like this. This was, uh, you know, not what I had prepared for. This was not, you know, truly who I, who I was as a fighter. Let's get more experience. Let's work on the whole the whole mixed martial arts package and and uh, and come back and and uh, try to make a real go at this. And and uh, that's what really what motivated me to to commit myself as a professional fighter and not just kind of eh, let's just try it and see what happens. Now it was like, all right, I can't go out like that. What do you do, like the preparation? Let's say you're gonna fight me, nobody, right? Right. Let's say I'm a well-established UFC. Sure. Guy. And do you see videos of me? What's a scout? I tried, man. You know, I. Uh, do you try to figure me out when you're watching the videos? Definitely. I think there's a couple things. It all is dependent on your style that you you come into the game with. So uh, you kind of look at yourself and look at where you're strong and where you're weak. Um, and you, you do your best to kind of fill in those holes uh, during training camps or in between training camps. And then once, the, once you get a fight, once you sign that dotted line, um, that's when you really start preparing very specifically for a fighter. So I would, you know, sit down with my coaches, analyze uh, videotape, look at where my opponent is weak and strong, and where we want to avoid certain situations of the fight, and and where we need to prepare for those situations. You know, I always would approach it for with the idea that you need to prepare for the worst. Um, so be prepared for where that guy is strong and then identify those areas where he's weak where you can hopefully bring the fight into those areas and you know mixed martial arts is so unique in that it, it encompasses so many different things and there's so many ways to win and lose um, so we'd really have to come up with a very good strategy for every single fight whether it's videotape or specific drills or you know um, wh whatever it is you know and, and bringing in certain sparring partners that would mimic what uh, your opponent would do so um, over time, I think we really came up with a, a very good process. And each each training camp, I felt like it got better and more specific every time out. So, and even as I went through my career, I actually um, really lightened the load of, of how much I would do as far as my own video analysis. I started to really let my coaches do the coaching, and I do less of that just because it. You know, as a fighter, my job would be to just kind of you tell me what to do, and I'll do that. And 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 I. It became less stressful that way, so we got it. We had it better and better every time. So let's say the fight starts December. Mm -hmm. When do you train like hard? How many so, months before? You know, some fighters they only train when they have a fight. So as soon as they have a fight, then they go, "All right, time to get in the gym." We have whatever two months or whatever it is, eight week training camp. I would always take the approach of training all the time. You know, I didn't have my first fight till I was 28 years old, so I always felt like, you know, I had a lot of catching up to do. Um, so I would just train throughout. Uh, there was no off season uh, for me, um, but it would kind of be there would be peaks and valleys to to the year. You know, I wouldn't uh, train intensely all the time. Um, I would be in the gym all the time, two times a, a day, just working on different skill sets. You know, sparring here and there. But as soon as I uh, had it had a fight signed, I would probably do about a six week intense training camp. So I was always in the gym. So I really didn't have to get back in shape necessarily unless I was coming back from an injury or something. But, um, yeah, that, that was always my approach. Stay in the gym and then ramp it up once I have a fight. And uh, it, it worked out well for me, I think. Ken, tell yeah. me about the experience. When you're when you were a well-established fighter, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You're in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. all right? It's <laughs> packed, baby, yep. all right? You got your entourage. You got, <laughs> you know, it's the like the, one of the main fights, yep, okay? Yep. You got your entourage. You're walking down. And once you get on those steps, once yeah. you walk up the steps, yeah. you, the music is blasting. Mm -hmm. Once you get in that octagon, <laughs> what's going through your mind? Come on now. Tell it's me crazy, you know. Before we had this guy Burt Watson who organizes everything there in the UFC backstage, and he gives us the five, you know, the fifteen-minute update, and then five minutes, and every single time, you know, he he has this thing. All right, baby, it's time to go out there, baby. Did Let's do this. And office? my heart is where every single time I was like, just give me five more minutes, just give me another five more before I go out there. Hearing that, I get butterflies. Even today, when I'm walking backstage and I hear him yell that to other fighters. It's like Pavlov's dogs. I, my, I, my butterflies start going. I start getting nervous. And, um, but as you get closer to the cage, the closer you walk to the cage, the more confident you feel, the more relaxed you feel. Um, and over time, I feel like it got better. But there was never a time where I wasn't nervous. Always nervous. But as I started walking up, the uh, up, you know, up those stairs into the cage, I felt better and better. I felt way more confident and, and way more relaxed. And just, this is what I do. I'm ready. 
uh, let's do it. But And then you kind of look around, you see the different faces, and you'd be like, oh, there's Anthony Kinius from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and there's that, and there's that guy. You know, you're like, yeah, every once in a while, you'd be like, oh, that's cool. Oh, wait a sec, I got to fight here. I got to focus. So you go to the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, but be honest with me. Yeah. Do you think UFC fighters right now on your days, yeah. did they ever doubt and say, hmm, this guy's tough, man? Yeah. Have you ever doubted yourself? Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. I, th I think that there there are times there every once in a while you're like, man, I don't I don't know if I can beat this guy, you know? And I think there's always that doubt um, every single time out. And the, the other thing is a lot of times you're like, man, you know, I match up really well against this guy, but anything can happen. I can get cut. I can slip on a banana peel. I can get a bad decision. I can get a bad referee that stops the fight too early. And I just learned that eventually to stop trying to control the things that you can't control. You know, and, and you just kind of have to let yourself go and, and, and focus on yourself the best that you can and, and, and do your job and, and hope that it turns out well, man. If there was a kid yeah. that came up to you, let's say a high school kid, that says, yeah. Kenny, I want to be a UFC fighter. Right. What training would you start him off with and say, hey, you got to start off with why? You know, I wish I had this and, and I didn't. I, was, I came from a small school system in, in Boston and, and we didn't have it, but wrestling. Wrestling, number I think, one. to me, I think is number one because, first of all, it really lays the foundation for you to be disciplined. It lays the foundation for you to learn how to manage your weight. It, it gives you a foundation of um, hard work, hard work ethic, you know, understanding that um, you can't break through those barriers. You know, every time, every once in a while, you'd be like, man, I can't take this guy down or I'm tired and practice or whatever. And you push through those things and you learn a lot about yourself of how tough you are and how tough you can be. And I feel like wrestling really provides a great template for that. Um, and you could do it at a really young age. You don't have to get hit. You don't have to get busted up. Um, and so I, I think that's wrestling, the best way. After, Wrest wrestling. after wrestling, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So it, getting the ability to defend yourself off your back, the ability to submit guys, um, get them in chokeholds, get them in different locks where you can defend yourself, because that's ultimately is what's going to allow you to finish a fight. Uh, and, and then, of course, uh, there's boxing and Muay Thai. There's so many things, but I feel like the grappling arts, it, it can provide a great base for you. And how long would you think it, it would take yeah. uh, a kid to like have that training automatically that you don't have to think about it. Does it take years? Does it take at least 10 years? It does. I think so. You know, um, I, I think it takes a, a long time of understanding your body, understanding the style that works for you. How many years did um, it take you when you started? I started, <clears throat> I started training in 97. Um, and, and, I, and, and I think I had my first fight in 2004 or something like that. Okay, so, like so yeah, so, you know, it, it depends. Everyone's different. Depends what kind of athletic background you come from and, and how many years you kind of really applied yourself and, and how intensely you applied yourself, too. You know? it, it was awful, you know, especially I was trying to come back from... Um, the shot at a belt at, at 145 pounds against Jose Aldo, and I wanted to come back. I wanted to redeem myself, you know. And um, I was working out hard, hurt my back uh, in training, and he said, "Man, he's like, this is this is something that's going to plague you. you. You know, you're you need to stop. You know, um, it's going to prevent you from being at your peak." And, and that's dangerous. You know, when you're going into it, you're not just going out there playing tiddlywinks. You're going out there, you know, to fight against another skilled combatant. And if that's going to limp you out there in the cage, he goes, you need, you need to stop fighting. It's too dangerous. It's too dangerous for you to fight uh, and be limited like that. And um, I heard him, but I didn't really listen. And I, I kept trying to come back. And, and sure enough, he was right. My back just never allowed me to get back to where I used to be. And, and, uh, I knew at that point it was it was time to retire, and I knew when fighting was no longer fun anymore. I knew it was time to hang up the gloves, you know. So, do you think financially, like, what am I going to do now? I was lucky in that, you know, I did TV work. I, I was doing commentary. I was doing, um, you know, a show called UFC Tonight on Fox Sports One, and. I had some other things going on. I had some some backup plans. Thankfully, I have a gym in Boston, Florian Martial Arts Center, and um, I had some other things going on. Thankfully, but I, I didn't know. You know, those weren't sure things. So yeah, I was a little nervous. But more than anything else, man, when I stopped training and I stopped 
working towards this goal, which was this fight on the horizon, I, I didn't really know what to do, man. I was definitely depressed. I mean, I, I was... Because it's a high, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, right. it's an adrenaline rush, and you're so used to just your routine, you know? Monday, you'd work on this, this, and that. Tuesday, this, this, and that. You had your coaches that would meet with you all the time, and, and you miss that. You miss that dynamic of being in the gym and getting ready for a fight, and it was tough. It was tough saying goodbye to that, for sure. What was your relationship like with Dana White? And when he found out the news, yeah. was he a little upset too? Because he really, I, I saw he really liked you. He, I yeah, I got along great with Dana, man. I, you know, Dana was always very good to me throughout my career. And, uh, you know, he he was really supportive, man. He was really supportive and, um, you know, he understood. And he's like, man, he goes, I, I just kind of wanted to just retire and just be quiet about it. And he's like, no, man, let's. Let's do something. He's like, uh, let me talk to the people over here at the UFC. Let's like make an announcement, get an official announcement. And, and he worked out this thing where he kind of announced me and, and, and announced my retirement. And it was just a, a really great thing that he did. And um, just Dana's been great over the years, man. He, he's from the moment he gave me the opportunity to be on the Ultimate Fighter to the to the moment that I retired, and and even still to this day, man, Dana's been unbelievable. So when, when you're announcing for Fox. Yeah. Dana sees me. He's like, "Yo, Kenny, how are you?" What's yeah, you all the time. You, Not he? at all. Never, okay. never, never, never. Right. And uh, he's he's always been extremely helpful, man. And uh, I have you know so many people over there to thank. You know everything that they've done for me, man. Everything from Dana and Lorenzo Fertitta and Fertitta Brothers and and uh, all all the guys over there at the UFC. All the different opportunities that they've they've provided for me, man. I'm very thankful. Very lucky. I think uh, Kenny answered. Uh my question, what is he doing now? Right? <laughs> That's so, right. What are you doing now? Yeah. Tell All right. So I, uh, I own a gym, Florian Martial Arts Center in Boston. I, uh, um, I host a show uh, at, on Fox Sports 1 every Wednesday night. Um, called UFC Tonight, and I'm also doing a lot of live commentary for the UFC. All, all the events that are on Fox Sports 1 and the events that are on um, UFC Fight Pass. So I, I go on, and they're, they're giving me to travel all over the world and and commentating different fights, so it's been fun, man. I'm still very much a part of a uh, sport that I love, and um, I blog every once in a while too for Fox for FoxSports.com and uh, on my uh, website uh, EvolveGentleman.com. That's coming soon, so yeah. You're doing a lot, of them, man. I'm staying busy, man. <laughs> oh, I'm staying God. busy. Yeah. yeah, but you know, if uh, answer this question, a lot mm -hmm. of the USC fight, former UFC fighters. I mean, yeah. do they have your success afterwards? What you're doing now? I mean, if you think about it. You're pretty much spoiled, man. You, you got I, I'm lucky, man. I really am. I hope. I hope so. I hope that fighters um, are able to find other things outside of just fighting, and, and they have to plan for retirement or whatever it is, because that could come around the corner, man. You can get injured at any time. It can all end very quickly. So, don't spend your money. Save your save money. Say that. Save, uh, save your money. Don't be a dummy and uh, plan. Plan for your retirement. You know, get other things going. Invest. Be smart, and uh, <laughs> it could all end tomorrow. It so yeah, it time, really right? could. Yeah. Kenny, if there was a movie about you. Uh huh. Oh wow. Which actor would you hire to play Kenny Floyd? I get comparisons to Brad Pitt all the time. Uh, that's the guy. I no, 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 I do. <laughs> Well, you know, who do you no, think no. has the skills? Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller would be would be would be the star. Everyone says I look like Ben Stiller, yeah, so that would be perfect. Like him, does he have your core? I don't know. He may he may have the moves. I don't know. You might have to train him. Exactly. Oh, you know, so we'll Stiller's see. Yeah, and I think we'll make, we'll make it funny. You know, make a little yeah, be a comedy maybe. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Pleasure having you. Seriously. Absolutely. We have man. so much fun. Always I good love talking this to you. Man. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. We're only now in sports. Kenny Florian in the house. Don't hit me now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, dude. Thanks, Thank you, man.